Hey guys, what's up? Um, today I thought I'd show you guys how to uh, install Sophos XG uh, firewall. So this is my current firewall. This is a Sophos UTM, and uh, actually I love that software, man. It's it's. I mean, I program Cisco firewalls and routers and Juniper and uh, what else do I program? Uh, Juniper, Fortinet, SonicWall, FortiGate. Uh, watch card and yeah, program pretty much all firewalls all day long and you know this is pretty my it's my favorite firewall it's pretty cool you know it's very full featured but uh, yeah I've been running the software since uh, a Starro uh, before when you know before stuff was bottom it was called a Starro and uh, I started messing with the version 6 and 7 but uh, let me show you my new server that I'm going to put it on it's a uh, a Dell R210 uh, server it's a perfect server for uh, firewalls and I'll show you why here a second. The uh, Dell R210 server. Um, it's actually a pretty cool server. It's a, it's a super tiny server. Um, it's a 19 inch rack mount server, but it's it's very tiny. So this will almost even fit into like a, a small like uh, telco rack, wall mounted telco rack. So if you wanted to put it like with a Cisco switch or whatever. I mean this is about the size of a Cisco ASA 5510. So it's, it's pretty tiny. Um, cool, I mean it has two uh, at least for the firewall, you're going to at least want to, we're going to have a two onboard NICs network cards right there. So that's going to be my WAN interface and my LAN interface. And uh, yeah, I make a lot of car videos, but you know, I mean, I'm an IT guy for a living. You know, that's what I do all day long. So troubleshoot IT and communications problems. Yeah, that's what FinTech Communications is, if you're wondering. <laughs> it's an IT company. So let me uh, take this cover off and I'll come back. Rough. Uh, so the, right now, this thing I bought this on eBay was probably uh, I think it was like 60, 70 bucks. You know, extremely cheap. And um, right now I have about four gig of RAM in here. That's perfect for what I'm doing. Looks like it has a looks like the network cards are Broadcom. And you can see the Broadcom chip there. And um, right now there's a normal hard drive in there. I'm actually going to replace that with a solid state drive. Um, one of the things nice, nice things about this, this computer, the uh, this computer, is that it's uh, super energy efficient and it's, uh, it's very very quiet. So it's not like your traditional full blown like rack mount server, which is you know extremely loud with all the fans. But uh, it, di it didn't actually come with a CD-ROM. I had to put that on there. I mean, it's just an old like laptop uh, DVD player I had on there. And uh, pretty cool server. This is this is like the perfect little computer server for a uh, firewall. And I also got the, uh, actually, I, I ordered this separately. I got the little bezel to make it look, uh, you know, dull bezel. And some rack mounts. But, uh, let me get the software gun. I'll get the, uh, firewall installed. It's, let me go through the steps. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to be using a, uh, 64 gig, uh, actually, I didn't know if it's 64 gig. I, I don't know. I, I took this out of one of my old, uh, little netbooks. And uh, I think it's like 64 gig or something like that, but it's uh, pretty fast. I mean, it has a pretty good uh, read and write speed, so should be sufficient for this uh, small firewall. Cool. That uh, drive in there, so I'm gonna put the case cover back on and fire this up and uh, start the installation. You can see the service booting up, and uh, this is not gonna be a tutorial on how to, you know, deal with servers, but. Um, you know, I, I hopefully you would actually know about computers and servers if you're going to be installing this. But yeah, you want to set the BIOS settings to obviously boot to the CD-ROM. And uh, go from there and see what happens. Alright. First screen, I don't know if you can see that. It's going to ask you to uh, format this hard drive. Um, yeah, this Sopo XG is really uh, specific about RAID controllers. I was trying to get it on that other server, that HP uh, DL360G5. Uh, and yeah, it wouldn't do it no matter what RAID controller I put in there. So this is really, uh, I have the BIOS set to AHCI mode for the uh, serial serial ATA controller. So just go ahead and click on yes, and that should be the next step. I'm stuck at this point here. Uh, for some reason, I want format. I mean, see it's a hard drive, but uh, what I thought was interesting is it says that it's a uh, detected appliance model. That's, I, I don't know, maybe they think this is a, uh, maybe a SOPO uses the uh, Dell R210 as a, one of their appliances, but uh, this is kind of weird. Just want to install no matter what. At least with the other ones, like the uh, HP uh, D 
DL, uh, was it three, was it DL360 uh, G5? I mean, that at least gave me like a RAID controller error. I basically couldn't find the hard drive, but... So yeah, this is actually kind of a pain in the ass to install, man. Compared to like, a, to, like the Sofos so uh, UTM and the Astaro, this thing has all kinds of freaking hangups. Alright, cool. Crazy, it started working all of a sudden. Um, yeah, I just created a USB stick too because I was kind of... It ended up something up with the CD-ROM player or not, but I couldn't get it to go. And came out, hit yes a couple times, and it started going through the uh, installation, so... I don't know, I guess we'll see here, but yeah. I guess if it hangs up, then I'll uh, try this thing right here, but uh, weird. All right, cool. All right, guys, looks like I got it installed. Let's go hit yes. Remove the CD around here. And hit yes to reboot. And that's about it. So I'll let it boot up and uh, see if I can log into the uh, graphical interface. Cool. So it's uh, fully booted up, and I'm going to go to this computer here, and I'm going to uh, uh, statically assign the IP address of 172.16.16.17. Uh, 172.16.16.16 uh, .16 is the default IP address, so I'll see if I can get into this web GUI and uh, go from there. So yeah, I have to statically assign an IP address because it's, hopefully it's not DHP, I guess we'll see. All right, cool. Yeah, there's not very much documentation on this thing. It's just kind of... <laughs> this is the home version, so I guess we'll see. All right, guys. I thought I'd show you guys a quick tip on uh, how you can actually set your network card up on two different IP addresses. Um, this this way will allow you to actually communicate with the, um, the Sophos XG and also go on the Internet at the same time because you're going to need to be able to go on the Internet and uh, communicate with this thing at the same time so you can activate the uh, firewall here. But... So go in your uh, control panel and then go oh, small categories, um, network sharing center and change adapters and go to my local Ethernet connection here and go to TCPI version four properties and if you click on the advanced tab, this is actually where you can uh, add a second IP address. So right now my static IP address is 192.168.1.50 and I'm going to add. Uh, 172.16.16.18 and even though it's connected to the same this is, there's no VLAN so even though it's, it's on the same network you can still communicate with multiple IP addresses or different networks alright okay this way I can actually compare with my old firewall as I recreate the rules yeah I want to do like a fresh program from scratch and not bring any rules from the old uh, so close you Tim over so um, all right so let's see uh, okay they uh, statically assigned the IP address in this computer and I was able to ping it now um, it looks like the internal LAN port is usually going to be ETH0 so on this motherboard it's actually uh, network port 1 that's the internal LAN and that's what the uh, internal IP address is on so um, all right, let me see if I can log on this web go here. I right, log in this thing for the first time. I don't know if you can see the URL. It's uh, encrypted, so it's HTTPS uh, 172.16.16.16 on port 4444. Uh, and uh, this is the first login. I guess we'll see what works. Yep, it should give me the error because it's probably not. It's not a real encryption key. Go advance, add exception, get certificate, confirm. Wow, there it is. So the default should be admin admin. Um, except, oh, well, I'm gonna add my serial number to this thing and get it going. But uh, so typically, um, the reason why the main reason why I actually use uh, Sophos is. Uh, I actually run a, uh, an internal exchange 2016 server and I host a bunch of websites which run on Apache. So the two features I use mainly for this firewall is the web application filter or firewall and uh, anti-spam. Because without the anti-spam it's, man I get so much spam, it blocks tons of spam. I mean you can do like reverse DNS checking, hello checking, 
pretty cool. But uh, also, you know, if I don't actually have this thing behind a web application firewall, man, I get tons of people uh, spamming my uh, more information. You know, if they go to my website, you know, fintechcommunications.com and click on the click on the information for more, or click on the link to send more information or request more information, I get these people that run these robotic scripts all along, trying to just you know thousands of emails come in. You know, it's it's crazy. They're doing side scripting or scripting attacks. Um, so, all right, cool. So, new firewall. Pretty stoked about it. I guess we'll see how it works. I'll show you a little couple more pages here, a couple more steps. But yeah, the license license synchronization thing was kind of a pain in the ass. Had to get to that. So, click on. I guess I'll go through this initial wizard and see what it does. Yeah, I've never seen this graphical interface before. So, uh, this only came out a few months ago. Uh, we don't want to go bridged. Bridge would be if you wanted to actually have like a. You know, actually, if you wanted to do like a, in in inline like a web filter. Slash uh, spam server or whatever. Let's see next. I'll just stick with this for now. Keep it like this, so I can play with it. And I'll keep it like that. DTP. Come back and use that. Pretty much just stick with the defaults. For now, I'll actually I'll fuck it. I'll just skip it. <laughs> I'll just do it manually. Eh, cool interface, huh? Yeah. I guess once I start configuring, I'll see how much uh, how similar it is to the other version. Yeah, I know the installation seemed a lot different. I mean, just the installation and the uh, and the boot up seemed way different than Astaro and and Sophos. So, cool. Let me know if you have any questions.